And oh my goodness, <laughs> playing the GFS all the way out with the Kuchera totals is Snow Metropolis, baby. Oh my oh goodness. My goodness. Oh my goodness. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Got no time for a cute little intro today. We have a lot to talk about, like our damaging ice storm that's underway right now in Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, all the way down into Oklahoma and Texas. Directly after that, we have to talk about our next big storm that's coming up early next week. All the models are starting to agree that we're going to have a major storm rip through the center part of the United States, all the way up into the Northeast. And then we're going to take a look at the medium range forecast, and we're just going to watch this parade of major winter storms work through the United States. Winter has just now begun for us, folks. Let's get right into it. All right, here's a big old view of the United States of America, and check it out. Our first storm is coming together just like we thought it would. If we zoom in here a little bit, you can see that ice and snow starting to take place around Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana. We've got ice falling in Evansville, Indiana, and some pretty heavy snow falling near Mount Vernon, Illinois, all the way up towards heading into Bloomington. Now, this ice is going to progress east and southeast into these areas that have ice storm warnings here. And look, the ice storm warnings expand all the way from eastern Kentucky down into western Tennessee. Here they are in southeastern Missouri, northeastern Arkansas, and a little bit of Mississippi down here. Some of these areas can see over a half inch of ice, which could cause widespread power outages, down trees, and make it almost impossible to drive on the road. Now, the northern little tip here is going to remain snow. That's why there's a winter weather advisory all the way up towards Cincinnati. And then that goes into southern Ohio, northern West Virginia, and then over here into Maryland, southern Southern Pennsylvania, Southern Jersey over here. You guys are going to see snow out of this. So we'll talk more about all that right now on the weather models. All right, here's the NAM model, the 12 kilometer. Let's put this into motion and see what she's going to look like. Here we are about 4 p.m. Our ice and snow is really broken out across northern Kentucky all the way up towards Chicago with some light snow falling up here in northern Indiana. If we keep pushing it on, that ice gets more intense and the snow spreads over into Pennsylvania now, Maryland. The snow will be heavy at times, especially around 10 p.m. tonight. But check out our ice band right here. It's still in central northern Kentucky with isolated freezing rain showers all the way down into central Texas. Play that forward a little bit more. The snow really intensifies up there in Pennsylvania and southern Jersey. And then check this out. Around 4 a.m. tomorrow, we're going to have a secondary system pop up and inject some new moisture into this. And that's really what's going to set off the ice storm. Heavy bands of rain are going to form down here and track northeast. The northern edge of those rain bands will be ice, and that's where the most accumulation of ice will occur. Watch this. Here comes that extra moisture. Here comes that heavy ice band. Free Freezing rain in southern Arkansas, western Tennessee. That works into southern Kentucky, eastern Kentucky. And this will be really heavy at times. That's why uh, we can see up to a half an inch, maybe an inch of ice here in Kentucky. And then when that secondary moisture gets into northern Virginia and Maryland, it's all snow. And check that out. It's going to be heavy at times, especially in southern Maryland and northern Virginia. Check that out. And then we're, at, we're done with it by 10 a.m. on Friday. So when we zoom in down here on the south, the ice totals are lighter, okay? This has a lot to do with the surface temperatures and all also, the fact that that secondary injection of moisture happens a little bit further to the east. Here in Texas, we're talking about a tenth of an inch of ice, with maybe some embedded areas down here south of Dallas, um, closer to a quarter inch, uh, maybe a half inch. I doubt anybody gets a half inch of ice in Texas. Now, the heaviest ice is going to fall over here in the east, with a pretty intense little area showing up on the latest NAM um, in southeast Arkansas, up through northwest Mississippi, and then all of Kentucky. All of Kentucky can see literally up to a half inch of ice, and this is what we've been seeing for a while now. In fact, actually, I I think it spread out a little bit more. Um, the last run was a little bit more intense, a little bit more concentrated. As you can see, if I go back to the, the most recent run, there's two areas, right? There's, there's an area up here, and then there's an area down here where ice happens. If we switch back to the reflectivity, here's that first band, right? That's what we're kind of dealing with right now. That goes through, and that drops a half inch of ice, and then that secondary heavier band of ice comes through, but it's quicker, okay? So um, some of the earlier models were showing both of those bands of ice hitting the same areas here in central Kentucky, uh, but now it's split up to where one affects southern Kentucky, one of them affects northern
northern Kentucky. So that's a good thing. It's the, that means the ice is going to be more spread out. But still, the I-64 corridor up here, it's going to be dangerous. It's going to be treacherous whenever you're trying to travel on this. This is not fun stuff. Additionally, the Howe Rogers Parkway down here, the Mountain Parkway, just get ready for some heavy ice. All the way back over here towards Louisville, Bowling Green. I mean, it's going to come down quick. Pay attention to your cars. Pay attention to uh, your trash cans outside. You'll be able to watch the ice really pile up on there. And if you get over a quarter inch of ice, prepare for down trees, power outages. I mean, this is, you know, it's more than likely going to happen. But thankfully, the NAM is not seeing anybody getting over an inch of ice on this run. So, whew. That's good. Okay, let's talk about snow, all right? So everybody north of the ice storm, once again, is gonna get some snow. We're talking about a trace to an inch of snow for most people up here in the Ohio Valley. Check this out. From St. Louis to Indianapolis, even up to Columbus here, Pittsburgh, we're talking about maybe an inch or slightly more than that. However, there is an area right here from Cincinnati to Charleston that could see two to three inches, maybe four inches of snow. And then there's another area down here from Blacksburg to Roanoke over to the eastern shore of Virginia that may see six inches or more. Also around the DC area, it's possible you see three to six inches from this storm. And then that goes into Delaware and uh, New Hampshire as well. Southern Pennsylvania, a widespread area of one to three inches. York, Pennsylvania, I think you're you're in a good spot to get two to four. Just get ready for some snow if you live in this area. We're talking about one to six inches anywhere in this area uh, with embedded areas higher than that, okay? And I'm still rooting for you, DC. You're right there. On, look at this. We have to zoom in because this is funny. Yesterday, the models were showing a giant area of 10 inches of snow right here around DC. And now <laughs> here comes the DC snow hole piling back in. It still shows DC getting 3.5 inches of snow here. I think that's possible. I, I don't think you're gonna see more than six inches in DC. Uh, Baltimore, I think you're right there in that three to six range. At this point, it's really not very beneficial to look at the models this closely. Just know that there's gonna be a big old band, a precipitation shield of snow moving through here this evening. And whoever gets under the right band is gonna get the most snow. Okay, let's take a look at our next big storm. This one's looking really interesting interesting right now. We're still a little bit far out, but the models are starting to agree that we're going to have a big storm come through. Let's check this out. Let's play it through. Here's our current one that we're dealing with right now on the 0Z Zero Euro. Okay, that moves out of here by 1 p.m. on Friday. And then check this out. We've got another little system um, on the tail end of that other one with some rising gulf moisture here that's going to try to cause some ice in Virginia and Maryland. And that may actually end up being a pretty significant little ice accumulation there, maybe up to a quarter inch. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. And then that turns into a little bit of ice all the way up into southeastern Pennsylvania, freezing rain in northern Jersey, New York City, and a little bit of snow, maybe some moderate snow in Vermont and New Hampshire, and some flurries in Maine, okay? Now, while I'm cranking this through, check this out over here, all right? Our Pacific jet is just throwing a bunch of moisture in. We've got our polar vortex coming down, and we have a southeast ridge down here. What that means is there are railroad tracks right here, okay? <laughs> These are railroad tracks right in through this area for a train of storms to come up through here, and that's exactly what we're going to see. Starting off with this storm, possibly going to be a blockbuster storm, a very memorable storm uh, for areas in the Ohio Valley and upper Midwest. Uh, all the way up into the Great Lakes and possibly even for the Northeast up here and certainly for the South. Check this out. It's snowing heavily, according to the Euro, at 10 p.m. on Sunday in Mexico, all the way down into Southwest Texas. Uh, the Panhandle of Texas is getting a bunch of snow and, and it's cold. We're talking about zero degree temperatures up here in Northern Texas. And then as we push that forward, watch, it intensifies. We've got extremely heavy snow in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas might be snow town, baby. And then as we push that forward, watch, a low pressure system forms here in the Gulf. This is exactly what you wanna see if you want a big snowstorm to come through. I've talked about this a lot, uh, but a lot of our memorable storms from the 90s, a lot of those blizzards that you hear about they start off down here in the gulf and they pull down this cold air with them and then they ride up the coast or like this one maybe they'll ride up the appalachian mountains which is even more rare and check this out as we push it forward we've got a sharp area of cold air coming down behind this low pressure system and we unfortunately have a big area of ice and freezing rain and that looks like it could possibly be very significant once again as that low moves into alabama now tennessee and kentucky uh, we're talking about heavy snow back here in missouri guys i don't know how to explain this to you. What we're looking at here is the possibility of a comma-shaped um, classic giant winter storm that brings close to blizzard conditions close to the low pressure system and just insane snow totals out here on the precipitation shield because it's going to be so cold. If it's snowing moderately and it's zero degrees outside, um, it doesn't take much at all to pile up a foot. Most of the time we, we talk about 10 to 1 snowfall ratios. This is going to be higher than that. And then we have a real bad problem here with ice along the Ohio River Valley and then that low continues north 
and we're talking about extremely heavy snow in Chicago, all the way through Illinois, down into Missouri, once again, Indiana, Michigan. And out in front of it, we're dealing with an ice storm for Pennsylvania, down into Maryland and Virginia, and possibly even some severe weather down here in the Dixie Alley, Georgia, Alabama. This is gonna be a very dynamic storm if it works out this way. If we push it forward just a little bit more, we've got that heavy ice all the way up into upstate New York now. Very heavy precipitation shield of snow in Michigan, all the way down through Chicago, Illinois once again. And then as we push that forward, it continues off north and it's completely out of here by 7 p.m. on Wednesday. We're talking about a broad area of over six inches of snow from northern Texas all the way through Oklahoma and then into Arkansas, okay? And then we're talking about over 10 inches of snow for much of southeastern Missouri, much of Illinois, much of northwestern Indiana into Michigan here. And for these areas right here, I'm not buying the 10 to one totals because the, I'm telling you guys, the temperatures are gonna be super low on the backside of this storm. So let's switch to Kuchera. This may be a little bit more realistic if we get a storm like this that actually happens. As far as snow totals go, it's important to remember that the further south you go, the further you get to this, the closer you get to this boundary line right here, the lower these totals are gonna be. The Kuchera ratio is good for looking at snowstorms that will occur in extremely cold environments. And that will be the case in the northern panhandle of Texas here where it's possible that you see close to two feet of snow from this storm. It is possible, okay? We're talking about well over a foot all the way through Oklahoma. Oklahoma City, 17 inches. Arkansas, 14, 15 inches. St. Louis, Missouri, over two feet of snow. It's possible, guys. I'm not, I'm not pulling your leg. Large totals all the way through Illinois here. Let's keep going east. And there you go. Look at here, uh, close to two feet. Over two feet in Chicago. Much of southeastern Wisconsin gets over two feet. Milwaukee, I mean 20.9 inches. Much of Michigan gets covered with well over a foot of snow, close to two feet. And upstate New York, all the way through the Adirondacks, Maine there. And much of Canada is just covered in well over a foot of snow. Once again, we're talking about model forecast here. This is not exactly what's gonna happen, but the probability of this occurring increases each day that the model shows it. Okay, let's take a look at the GFS. We're gonna look at that storm again, and then we're gonna take a look at all the storms that are gonna come after it. Check this out. The GFS shows our storm even stronger in Texas here. Check this out. Heavy snow well into Mexico. We've got freezing rain down as far as Houston, Texas. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at all this cold air. The 12Z GFS, I mean, if this was to verify, we would, oh my God, this would be this would be a historic storm, not just a major winter storm. This would be a historic storm um, as that trough digs deep into Mexico here. We've got heavy snow uh, from Amarillo, Texas, all the way to Dallas, sleet and freezing rain all the way to the coast. And then it deepens and we get our low pressure system there in Alabama. And we've got a heavy snowstorm once again for these same areas over here along the Mississippi River and Ohio River Valleys. Lots of sleet and freezing rain for that boundary though. Looky here, Huntsville, Alabama is getting an ice storm at 10 p.m on Monday, February 15th, as this is just four or five days away. That's that's how real this is right now, okay? Let's keep pushing this forward. That's an apps runner if I've ever seen one. The low goes right over the Appalachian Mountains. And we've got a full-on classic snowstorm for Northwest Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan here. And then once again, we've got that ice and sleet on the front edge here for Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey, New York City. But it does turn into heavy snow in upstate New York as it moves on to the coast. There's a transfer of energy there. There's a lot more energy to work with over here in the Atlantic. So it's like here, you can have my low and there you go. <laughs> and then we're out to sea. Snowfall totals from that. Once again, we're talking about over a foot for a bunch of people here in the path of this storm. And this is the Kuchera totals again. Once again, I think that this is going to be a very cold storm on the backside. Uh, so I think we're talking about well over 10 to one ratios. So we got to look at this. This is a little bit further south and east than the Euro with the bullseye of the snow coming in Arkansas through the Ohio River here all the way into Indianapolis. Um, but still ton of snow for Central Texas. Amarillo, Texas getting over a foot. Why not? With some really intense banding setting up here uh, in southeastern Illinois and northwestern Ohio. Now I'm going to play this through pretty quick. You guys think I'm joking about a parade of storms. Check this out. I mean, it's just nonstop snow town, baby. Watch this, one storm, two storm, three storm, four storm, five storm, uh, six storm, seven storm. <laughs> This is a parade and a half of winter storms. You don't see this all the time. And these are major winter storms too. And then we got another one coming together right here. And that one is for the even further south and east. We've got heavy snow in northeast Louisiana, Mississippi, all the way. And we've got that freezing precipitation all the way into central Alabama, Birmingham there. And then we've got a heavy snow for eastern Kentucky, central Tennessee, uh, much of Ohio, Pennsylvania, the northeast there. And then that brings down the rest of that polar air with it. I haven't seen a run of the 
the GFS looked this enticing in a while. And oh my goodness, <laughs> playing the GFS all the way out with the Kuchera totals is Snow Metropolis, baby. Oh my goodness. I want you to take a look at this, um, you know, uh, an area of over two feet of snow all the way through here. Uh, wouldn't you love to see it? This is just the culmination of two extremely major snowstorms with little snowstorms peppered in between. This is what you get over the course of just 384 hours. Even the Northwest is getting heavily affected by this Pacific jet that's, that's really fueling a lot of these storms for us. Uh, with over 100 inches possible here in the mountains in western Washington, western Oregon. Idaho's looking like they're going to get 80 inches in some of the mountainous areas, 90 inches possible here. You don't see a model run like this very often without it being an error. And I don't believe this is an error. I really don't. I think that the opportunity for the pattern to really light up um, in this area is there. Will it look exactly like this? No. No, it's not. But somebody in here, I promise you, somebody in here before the end of February is going to be better buried in snow. All right, guys, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I appreciate you being here. Make sure you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Still, 75% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed. Additionally, I talked about it yesterday, tonight at 6 p.m. I'm going live for members only, doing a super in-depth live stream where I can answer every single question in the chat. And we're just gonna go for an hour or two talking extensively about the upcoming threats for winter storms. We're gonna watch some models roll out together and it's gonna be a good time. If you're not a member yet, make sure you join. There's a link in the description and there's a nice little button next to the subscribe button. For as little as $5 a month, you can become a part of the Storm Seekers Club and get all kinds of exclusive perks. I'll see you tomorrow if my power's not out from the ice storm, all right? <laughs> Goodbye. Whoop.